hallway. Back on this one. No, you're using my tree marking paint, right? No, this is house marking paint. <laughs> it said house marking paint on the lid. Uh, I brought that for the trees. <laughs> Why did it say house marking paint? What does it say house marking paint? It was on the cover. I already took the cover off. It doesn't have a cover on it. It was on the top. It said house marking paint. Ah. I don't have the cover no more. I, I love the bright orange hallway. It's very uh, festive. So is this is this the true color of what it's actually going to be? No, you know what kids love to do down the hallway? <laughs> Dirt smear is going to be the color of the day. I don't know why. I don't know why. They I do didn't even think about that because we don't really have a hallway in our house. Oh my gosh. Can we put nail strips on the wall? <sighs> well, what do you think? Does, uh, does this make it official now? Let me know in the comments down below. Take a good look behind me right here. Right here we have my cabin. If you remember way back in, I think it was 2020, we were kind of sort of debating about building. And that was when I had already put in an order for my cabin and it was on its way. But we weren't quite sure if it was actually gonna happen. Well, fortunately, it ended up that I was able to keep my cabin right here where it sat. Now this is where we had planned 10 years ago to build a house. When we first moved out onto this property, it was this exact time of year, except it wasn't this sunny. It was cold, it was ugly, and it was brown, much like it is now, but minus the blue skies. And this is the view that we are looking at. Right here. We sit at the top of this mound right here, and we stared out into brown ugliness. But even 10 years ago, Having never seen the property green and beautiful, we knew that this was the site that we wanted to look at. And so 10 years ago, before even buying the property, we had earmarked off this exact spot to be the spot where we would build our future house one day. Now, unfortunately, our plans did not go to plan. And we ended up having to live in a camper for several months and then put the double wide out on the property. We actually had contracted with a local Amish guy to build a beautiful log cabin that would sit right here. But unfortunately, he contracted Lyme disease and became gravely ill the year that we had planned to build. So we had to scratch that plan. And so for the next 10 years, we saved and saved and saved and saved and housing prices climbed. Several times we went through and we thought we were finally ready to build a house, but the prices still were not there after 2020 everything skyrocketed and so finally on the blue eric began running numbers he came up with a new house plan and this one finally seems like it will actually fit the bill for what we're looking for now so far things are kind of looking like they're going to come in under budget i'm not going to give you any details yet because we are still in the preliminary planning stages but the only reason i am telling you now is because this week we plan to actually file the petition with our local township. Now out here, we ran into a big snafu. And if you are looking at building next to your current house, you need to listen up. Little did we know at the time, you actually cannot build next to an existing house if it's on the same property. The reason is a lot of townships do not want you to live in two houses at once. And so by allowing you to have two houses, they're inadvertently allowing you to potentially have two families, two families that also are not paying property tax. So for that reason, it's a very, very sticky situation to actually build next to your existing house. And so that is what we've been working through today. That is what we are putting in to do this week. We actually have to file a special petition to let the township know exactly what we wanna do give them an example of our house, tell them how long it's approximately gonna take us, and basically reassure them that we have no plans to live in two houses at once because we wanna get this thing 
done and out the door because we have Christmas trees to grow. So here is exactly how this is gonna go down. We are filing the petition this week to be able to build. The township then has to get paperwork ready on their end. Once that is done, then we have to meet before the board of the township to tell them about our plan and get feedback. If they approve it, then we can go through with the build. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't approve it because the future house is gonna look a lot better and be worth a lot more than the current one. And honestly, if they want our tax money, they're definitely gonna approve it because it's gonna increase dramatically. <laughs> Also take note, if you are planning to build and you're building on your property, it will increase your value, which is great if you're planning to sell, but not so great if you're trying to figure out on property taxes. So after the township approves everything and we can apply for our building permit, then we can finally start breaking ground. The plan thus far is to start breaking ground in May, likely the end of May. Now, there are a couple of other issues that will have to come up. The first one is my cabin right here is going to have to move because we can't put a house in if the cabin's here. So that means I have to find a way to carefully move it to the other side of the front property and hope that it doesn't fall apart in the process. So we have that. The other thing is, of course, we are still farming. We have Christmas trees to plant. We have hay to cut. We've got farming to do. So building a house when we're already really short on time is going to be really tricky, but we're going to do the best that we can. And what we are going to show you guys is going to be more realistic of what you guys can do too. Now I'm not going to show you guys the house plan just yet. It's definitely going to be completely different than what you normally see on YouTube. I'm going to give you that. It's going to be kind of like a Barndo style, but a lot different than all the Barndos that you see out there right now. So, Really excited, really nervous. <laughs> but if for whatever reason you guys feel like you wanna see more of the house building and less of the farming or vice versa, just let me know in the comments down below. Next to the normal size door. So this is normal size. Ian feels like a normal tall person here. And then we come over to the super sized door. <laughs> like, I thought I was done. I think it'd be, it'd be very expansive. What? What's the matter? Huh? What's the matter? I That's... think this is an outswing door. And we wanted an in-swing door? 
doesn't really matter. I mean, a lot of patios go with outswings. Because it opens, yeah, it's definitely an outswing. Hmm. So what did you pay for the set? Uh, with the handles, two thousand. Two thousand, and these, these are brand are new. Eight hundred. Eight. Well, it was a, it was a little under twenty one hundred. It was eight hundred, a piece for the doors, and then he wanted two seventy five for the handles. And how much is this door specifically brand new at the store? This is a brand new door, but how much is it at the store normally? Their list price is like nine thousand. And you got it for eight hundred. But I think realistically, you probably could get it for six. Still, six thousand versus eight hundred. I mean, that's our quote. We got a quote for Marvin doors, and this one was five thousand. Okay. For the same style. Mm-hmm. Eight foot. But that was in foot. brown, right? Mm-hmm. So I think the white was white cheaper. You oh. couldn't get. You couldn't get brown interior. Oh. It was white interior, brown exterior. Okay. So I guess we're going to be painting it anyway. Just be painting both sides. Because we don't do white on the farm. All right, guys. There's a taste of what's going to be going on. That's all you're getting. <laughs> For now. I'm going to have to admit, I'm still kind of in disbelief that it's actually happening, and I'm not really believing it because we've been here so many times and it has not happened. So stay tuned guys, thank you so much. If you're not subscribed and this is your first time watching the channel, hit the subscribe button, follow along. Let me know your thoughts on the house build and farming life in general. Love you guys so much, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for leaving a comment. And if you enjoyed it, and if you're excited about the building of a house, give a thumbs up. Oh, and one last thing, really quick. Ginger, our Frenchton Bulldog, just had her last litter of puppies. Aww. They are exactly one week old today. So that means they have seven weeks before they are ready to go home. Now these things fly off the shelf. I've already got three sold with a fourth that's picking out their next one and a couple other previous buyers coming back for another one. Every single person comes back to me saying this is the best dog that they have ever owned. And it's partly because of how I raise them, but it's partly also the breed. If you're not familiar with a French Bulldog, they're similar to a French Bulldog, minus all the negative aspects. So they're not overly stubborn. They're not as hard to potty train. They're athletic. They are smart. They are quirky. They are happy. They love to please. They're fiercely loyal. They're also very guarding of kids and pets and livestock. They are amazing farm dogs. They're very savvy on stuff, very smart. But more to the point, they fit in the tractor and they fit on your lap. And they don't have as many health issues as regular Frenchies. They're all DNA health tested to be clear of the major issues that affect Frenchies and Boston. So if you guys are interested in possibly buying one, I'm only throwing this out there for this video. Unless you ask me again, then I'll throw it out again. But here is a website where you can go check them out. They are definitely a pretty penny but they are a more uncommon breed. There's a lot fewer of them, and the majority of them that are out there don't have as high quality standards as these guys have. So, quality hay, quality dogs, quality maple syrup, that's how we work out here. To get your puppy, you would have to, of course, fly out here, unless you're close by, then you can drive out here. Uh, we have people from all over the country that fly out to pick up their puppy and fly back. They can ride under the seat in the airline cabin, so that's not a big issue. But like I said, if you're interested, reach out to me, let me know. Um, just let me know you're coming from the YouTube channel and I will give you $250 off your puppy. All right. <laughs>